Five spoken evil, show me the evil. Five spoken well, why strikest thou me? Words taken from the gospel, from the passion, according to St. John, this Good Friday. Who among us has not had regrets after finishing some important task in our lives? Oftentimes, there is this inescapable thought that we have not done things as well as we could have. We could have done better. We could have worked harder. We could have brought about a better outcome. We could have ran faster to cross the finish line sooner. We could have studied harder to get a better score. We could have worked longer to make a better product. We also have many regrets, don't we? About our behavior in our youth, about sins that haunt us for the rest of our life. Maybe we could have raised our children a little different about learning a trade in life that I've led. Not learning to play a musical instrument. I'd love to play the oboe. I'm 50. I'm not going to be playing the oboe, probably. There are two people. There are two people who did not have any such regret. Jesus and Mary. Listen to St. Peter Julian Amard give an example of this. Speaking of the Eucharist, he said, the Eucharist is an excess of what was needed for the work of redemption. It was not required of Jesus Christ by his Father's justice. The Passion and Calvary were sufficient to reconcile us with God and reopen for us the doors of our Father's home. Justice was fulfilled. Why then did our Lord institute the Eucharist? He instituted it for himself to satisfy himself, to content his heart. Even if it had been useless to us, the Eucharist was a need for our Lord. He wanted no regrets. He wanted to be completely satisfied in hindsight of everything he did. He spoke well. He spoke perfectly. He never spoke Wrongly, no regrets. Who of us can say that? Similarly, in regards to the passion, listen to Venerable Mother Mary of Agreda. She said, if our Savior had caused the passion to stop short of the highest level, which his sorrow was capable of, his love would not have rested satisfied. He would not have rested satisfied. I could have done more and I didn't nor would it have been so evident that his love was not to be extinguished by the multitude of tribulations. What does the Bible say? What does the scripture say? Many waters cannot quench charity, neither can floods drown it. The incalculable amount of sacrifices and shedding of animals' blood from Moses down to the Christ did not satisfy the heart of God. Thus he came himself and he shed his own blood and he drained it to the very last drop. His majesty, consequently, his majesty, our Lord, has nothing with which to reproach himself and all that he has done for us. He did it all. He did it perfectly. When all was finished, he was completely satisfied. St. Maximus says, with all the fathers and the doctors, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit of his own will and authority. In other words, he chose when it was finished, when it was satisfactory. All possible sins, past, present, and future, had been atoned for. All possible sinners were redeemed. All possible wounds were healed. The deepest act of love was on display for all to see for all time. One way of thinking about it is he suffered the Alpha and the Omega from the beginning to the end of every possible way. The scholastics love to talk about all the possible ways that Christ suffered, and he covered all the bases. By the way, this is also why St. Vincent Ferrer and others tell us there's no beginning and no end to the liturgy today. Because we killed the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. We killed him. Thus, we do not start 
the sign of the cross. And there's no end. No final end. Just walk away. Amazingly, his mother can claim the same as our Lord. Thus, St. Maximus taught, not only was the Immaculate Mother inseparable from him, but she shared his pain. And mentally, she was tortured and crucified with him. In another place, it is neither in our power nor in anyone else's power to describe the Holy Virgin's suffering and tears and the groanings of her heart at each moment. For they are beyond nature as her birthing, that is, her giving birth to her divine son in miraculous and painless manner. So also her sorrow, which was occasioned by the crucifixion of our Lord, is inexpressible by human beings. In other words, it was miraculous the way she sustained it. In a number of places and ways, he explains, Maximus the Confessor, that the Blessed Virgin experienced every pain and suffering of her divine son, sharing with him the entire passion. Thus, he says, the sufferings and pains of the Holy Virgin are beyond thought and speech and are the measure of her distinction from all others. O blessed soul of the Immaculate Mother, he explains, which is stronger than a diamond and made of precious stones that no sword could cut completely. How did the Immaculate Mother endure the pain, he asks. How did she not give up her spirit as well? But it is clear that the grace and power of the crucified Lord sustained her. He gave up his spirit himself as he saw it was necessary. But his power sustained the soul of his mother so that she was invested in every action as he himself was. She was with them intimately every step of the way, suffering everything. Wow. These two, Jesus and Mary, are the epicenter of redemption. Like a rock thrown into a still lake, all the waves would work out from there and save souls. Without that center, there would be no wave of redemption or salvation. What more could they have done for us that they did not do? They have no regrets. They left nothing undone. And dare I say it, the saints in heaven would say, if they could, that they wished they had done still more. Surely if they had a wish, it would be to have suffered even more for God and their fellow man, to have loved more purely and perfectly. Thus, St. Teresa of Jesus wanted to live until the end of time to suffer for one degree of glory in heaven, to bring God that greater glory. She wanted to go back and, as it were, suffer until the end of time. St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, a Florentine Carmelite, what was her motto? To suffer and not to die. When St. Francis Xavier was doing his missionary work, he was begging our Lord for more. Give me more suffering. Because he understood what it meant. He wanted no regrets at the end of the day. How many of us that are alive now think that we do not have what is needed to conquer some fault or sin or problem that we're confronted with in this world? Or we blame our problem on someone or something or even the lack of divine assistance? St. Maximus comes to our aid, speaking for the Blessed Virgin in a lament. He compares the exodus of the Israelites to the Passion. He says, first they dressed you in robe of mockery, you who one time covered them with a cloud of light and led them as a father leads children and kept them as the pupil of the eye. Has he not baptized us? Has he not closed us with light? They placed on you a crown of thorns the one who crowned them with glory and honor. Has he not given us a pledge of eternal life in the Eucharist? They struck you with a reed, they on whose behalf you ordered Moses to strike the sea with a rod, and you divided it and led them across. Although the sea covered their enemies, the evil ones dared to strike you on the cheek. You who have shown the light of your face and given life, 
who one time glorified the face of Moses. Has he not forgiven our sins that we've slapped him with and killed him with in confession? They were not ashamed to spit on you. Oh, the astonishment. Oh, their malevolence, he says. You who with spittle opened the eyes of the man blind from birth. They nailed your hands and your feet with nails. You who led them out from the bonds of servitude in Egypt and now have released the bonds of original curse. In return for the cleansing of the lepers, they placed wounds upon you. In return for the resurrection of the dead, they condemned you to death. In return for the illumination of the blind, oh my light, they hastened to darken your eyes. In your place, oh my life, they asked for Barabbas and they gave you over to death. Thus we have the reproaches of Good Friday. What more could I have done for you? that I did not do. I have no regrets. I did it all. Love has no regrets. In St. Ignatius' rule for discernment, he says we should put ourselves at the end of time in the general judgment. He says, looking and considering how I shall find myself on the day of judgment, to think how I would then want to have deliberated about the present matter how I would have acted now in the present, thinking about it toward the end, in light of the end. And to take now the rule which I would then wish to have kept in order that I may find myself in entire pleasure and joy, having no regrets on that day. What can I do now? What can we do now so that we will not regret on that day. Now is the time, dear people, to do that thing. Finally, we can ask, how can we do this? I want to do it, Father. I really do. How? We need a motivation. We need force. We need power. What is this power? We often, we lack strength. We lack motivation. What is this motive for us? It is love, charity. God's love. It is the love of God from which springs love of neighbor, such that great suffering can be embraced. We must pray for this love. Thus, I often ask people to pray to love their cross, no matter what it is. Pray to love your cross. Pray to love that difficult neighbor, that difficult spouse, that difficult place, whatever it is that we have to deal with. How many today foolishly say things like this? If you loved me, you would let me do this. Or if you love me, you would leave me alone. Or if you love me, you'll love me as I am. Our Lord says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Our Lord says, if you love me, take up your cross and follow after me. And deny yourself. Jesus and Mary, they show us when we do this, hearts melt and they convert. The dead come back to life and even creation responds. Pray to love your cross, to love the cross with Jesus and Mary. Share in the passion and your ability to live without those regrets will be fulfilled. Love has no regrets. Divine love has no regrets.